Welcome. We're going to look at some definite integrals where we're going to take this first integral. It's the integral from 0 to 2 of the function 4t minus 1. Graphing is not required. Uh, to the right, uh, we did sketch the graph of 4x minus 1. It's a linear function with a slope of 4, y-intercept at negative 1. Uh, just to compute the area and get a visual on what we're calculating. Uh, you don't have to have a graph. The main thing is to correctly take the antiderivative. So for 4t, its antiderivative is going to be 2t squared. You add 1 to the power, divide by the result, and then simplify. So 2t squared is the antiderivative of 4t. Minus 1 has an antiderivative of negative 1 t. Definite integrals, you'll have a lower and an upper limit. You evaluate the antiderivative at both values, top value first. So we're going to have 2t squared minus t evaluated with a 2 minus, and then we're going to take that antiderivative and substitute in a 0, the lower limit. Using a calculator, you will get a net area of 6. Area for definite integrals is area that is found above the x-axis minus area found below the x-axis and it gives you a net area. Now if all of the area is above the x-axis or more of it is above the x-axis than below, you can expect a positive value. And that's what we have in this example. There's more area between the function and the x-axis than there is under the x-axis and function. On the second example, we found the definite integral of negative 1 to 1 for the cube root of t minus 3 dt. So let's start with the antiderivative. Remember that a radical can be written with a fraction exponent. Specifically, cube root can be written with a power of 1 third. Minus 3 stays the same. And so now we can carry out our procedure for the antiderivative. One third plus one is four thirds. Divide by that result. Your second term negative three has an antiderivative of three t. For any constant, you just stick the variable to it. Antiderivative evaluated at one and antiderivative evaluated at negative one it's the top minus the bottom once you've set those into the antiderivative. Now in this step, dividing by 4 thirds is the same as multiplying by 3 fourths. So that's all I did from this step to that step is just make it look a little nicer. So the antiderivative with a 1 plugged in, carefully calculated, that's cube root of 1 to the 4th. That's still 1. So anyway, feel free to use your calculator. This first bracket has a value of negative 9 fourths. The second bracket, cube root of negative 1, is negative 1 to the fourth is positive 1. And then that makes a plus 3. Long story short, this value in the second bracket is 15 fourths. So if you take the difference in the upper limit value minus the lower limit value, and I'm getting upper limit from 1, lower limit from negative 1, you get a net area of negative 6. Now for this function, the cube root of t minus 3, from negative 1 to positive 1, it's all located under the x-axis. So that means that we should expect a negative value. And the last example for this video we have the absolute value of 2x minus 3. And we're going to find the area between this function and the x-axis from 0 to 3. Don't forget that absolute value is a piecewise function. When the function has a value of 0, that's going to occur at 3 halves. 2x minus 3, if you set it equal to 0, solve for x, you get 3 halves. So that's where the absolute value graph has a vertex. That's where it changes direction. Left of the vertex, the function behaves as 
the negated form of 2x minus 3, which is 3 minus 2x. So the red part is to signify the left piece of the function, 3 minus 2x. Once you get to the vertex and beyond the positive side of it, then the function remains the same. It's 2x minus 3. So we're going to evaluate that integral from 3 halves to 3. So we are covering 0 to 3, but we have to stop halfway through because 3 halves is where the absolute value function zeroes out. All right, in the pink, in the pink, we're going to go from 0 to 3 halves. The antiderivative is 3x minus x squared evaluated at 3 halves and 0. When you plug 3 halves in, you get your value. Subtract. When you plug 0 in, you're just going to get 0. So we calculated in class that this antiderivative for the left piece had an area of 9 fourths. Then for the green section between that function and the x-axis, from 3 halves to 3, Notice the integral limits have been split up. Zero to the vertex and then vertex to the right endpoint. 2x minus 3 has an antiderivative of x squared minus 3x. Evaluated at 3 minus evaluated at 3 halves. That also came out to 9 fourths for a total area under both pieces between the x-axis and the function of nine halves squared units, so four and a half squared units. Due to symmetry, because you have the same amount of area left of the vertex as you do to the right, you can double your integral and only integrate it halfway. So I picked uh, and you don't have to do this. You could do it just like we did in the red and the green. But if you pick one of these, for example, from three halves to three, and double, then it will also account for this left-sided area. I hope this video helps out. Reach out if you have any questions, phone, email, or come by the office if you're on campus.